Welcome back to the Suruj Podcast. In the previous episode, we heard about the hunting expedition led by Baba Gurudetta, Guru Hargobind's eldest son. They set off early at sunrise. All morning they were roaming around the forests and mountains, but they were not successful in finding any animals. In the late afternoon, one of Gurudetta's men was on horseback. He saw an animal in the distance behind some bushes. Now this sick was really feeling the effects of fatigue from hunting all morning and from the strong sun. So he had mistakenly thought that this animal was a deer because he could see uh, the horns peek out through the bushes. But really it was a cow. And he didn't want to ride up any closer because he thought that might scare off the animal. So he shot his rifle and the bullet went straight through the cow's head. When he got near, he realized the mistake he had made a big commotion erupted when the cow grazer saw this and a lot of locals came and they grabbed the sick. So Baba Gurudatta heard this and came with his men. And the previous chapter ends talking about how Baba Gurudatta was deliberating on what to do. The locals requested that he resurrect the cow on account of him being the son of the Guru. He must be capable to perform such miracles. But Baba Gurudatta understood this was against the tradition of the Gurus. So at the start of chapter 37, all the Sikh warriors with uh, Baba Gurudatta clasp their hand together and they also request to uh, Baba Gurudatta to revive this cow. They say that the killing of a cow is an incredibly great sin and that in reviving the cow their problems here would be resolved. The sin would be removed and it would be a great deed and everybody would praise the house of the Guru. They said, you know, your father would only get angry if you resurrect a human being, but not an animal. So this would be fine. Baba Gurudatta agreed to this in his mind. He was thinking that, you know, this would be a great deed to resurrect this cow. It would stop the commotion here. And my father wouldn't get too angry. And if he does, I'll do whatever he says. So thinking this, you know, Baba Gurudatta dis uh, dismounts off his horse. He starts walking towards the dead cow. And in his hand, he was holding this freshly cut branch from a neem tree he had cut while he was out in the forest. So he walks up to the cow, he brushes the cow with this branch saying, mother, get up, come out of your sleep and come eat the grass like you were doing before. All of the sick warriors and locals watched this and the cow quickly jumped up and started grazing on grass like before. Everybody was amazed at this and started to bow down at, uh, to Baba Gurudatta. They were all uh, had praise and glory of the Guru uh, instilled in their heart. Baba Gurudatta then mounted his horse again and he set off with his warriors. They came back to Kirithpur. Uh, they left their horses in the stable uh, and they all went to go eat in their respective houses. This was now um, late afternoon. Guru Hargobind heard that they had come back and we're having this very late lunch. So he called one of his six uh, that went with Baba Gurudatta on that hunting trip. So when the Sikh approaches uh, Guru Hargobind, Guru Hargobind asks him, you know, where did you spend uh, your day today hunting? You guys were out all day and you just got back now to eat? Tell me the truth about this. And if you lie to me, you will be punished. Listening to this, the warrior then began to shake. He thought that uh, well, he has to tell the truth because Guru Hargobind is all-knowing and, you know, if he lied, Guru, the Guru would know anyway. So he replied saying, an incredible event happened today. A cow died. One of our warriors accidentally shot at it and the locals made a big commotion about it. Baba Gurudatta came to help that sick. He understood that it was a great sin to kill a cow and everybody requested for him to revive the cow. So he did that and in doing so, the commotion stopped. But this is why we have come back so late. Listening to this, Guru Hargobind just went silent. He didn't reply. No one knew if he was angry or if he wasn't, but he remained quiet for about an hour and a half. And it was now evening time. And Guru Hargobind went to go see Baba Gurudatta. So Baba Gurudatta saw Guru Hargobind approaching and he saw that on his face, Guru Hargobind was not happy. Baba Gurudatta bowed down uh, to Guru Hargobind then stood up. Guru Hargobind's eyes were red and he began to say to Baba Gurudatta, so now you're doing great things, eh? These types of actions, the Gurus and the Saints, 
consider abominable. You are doing things now which great people don't have any reverence for, and the wise would never do. The wise bear the brunt of whatever situation with courage and fortitude. They may give their head, but they will not reveal their abilities. This is how the wise attain respect in the court of the divine. It was doing this type of action, which is why your brother, Atal Rai, had passed away. You're so wise and you still have not realized this? This type of action is never appropriate. And we are still alive here. And, you, and you're still doing this type of action here? Do you want more respect than me? You should not show these type of powers to anybody. And in doing so, you know, how many countless people will come here now, bringing their dead loved ones, uh, to have us revive them? Everyone in this world will die, even the greatest of emperors. This world is like a river that is constantly flowing. Who will we now choose to revive and who will we choose to leave dead? You know, have you thought about this at all? If you want to continue this type of action and won't listen to me, well then, two swords won't fit in one sheath. So if you want to stay here alive, then I'll go ahead and pass away. And if you want to keep me here, well then you should go and pass away. Without this, we cannot make it right. When one body remains, another has to go. Baba Gurdutta heard this and clasped his hands together. He wasn't happy, or he wasn't sad at all hearing this. He had a one-point focused mind, just imbued with the awareness or the knowledge of Brahm, the Divine. Baba Gurdutta thought that, you know, the exalted Guru Hargobind is all-powerful. Everything is in his hands. Their words are never futile. I should adhere to what he said. So he was thinking about this as he bowed down and he did three parkarmas around Guru Hargobind. A parkarma is when you walk a circle around your beloved or Guru. So he remained, remained silent and he walked out. He had the neem branch in his hand as he walked along. He wouldn't speak to anybody while he was walking through the city. In his mind, he had this determination that he would now leave his body. If he met anybody along the way, uh, they greeted him with a bow and he respectfully bowed back, but he wouldn't look anybody in the eye. He, in his mind, he was completely focused. People seeing him, though, were bewildered. They thought, you know, he looked sad. They were wondering what happened. So uh, Baba Gurdutta ends up walking all the way through Kiritpur. He gets outside of Kiritpur. He goes to a small mountain where Buddhan Shah's residence was. Now, in a previous episode, we mentioned how Buddhan Shah Fakir uh, requested to Baba Gurdutta that when his time comes as well, that he should leave his body in the same area. So he slowly climbed up this mountain and he got to Buddhan Shah's location. He saw a beautiful spot there where he then planted this neem branch into the ground. He then took some fabric off uh, and he laid it on the ground. When it, within his mind though, he had no attachment to his family. He didn't desire to meet them before passing. Even his beloved son, Hararai, in his mind, you know, he didn't have any uh, of those thoughts. As he laid down, he placed another fabric over the front of his body, co covering his face. And then he focused his mind on his true self, the, the divine. And through a yoga practice, uh, making his body completely still and focused, he was able to remove uh, his life force. And then he quickly and easily passed away, like a snake shedding its skin. He was always in equanimity, being focused on the divine. And even, you know, in this young age, his body still being youthful, he had passed away, leaving his body like a yogi uh, leaves material attachment. This is how chapter 37 ends. And in the next chapter, we'll hear how Guru Hargobind hears uh, of the passing of his son and about the funeral rites that are performed. So that's where we'll pick up next time. But as always, we would like to thank those who are continuing to sponsor the podcast via the Mangala Charan Patreon page.